Hello, my fellow forgiven sinners. Grace and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Patience. We all know we should have it. We can probably all list off quite a number of people that we know that we wish they had it. But do we have it? For our encouragement today, we read from James chapter 5, where God teaches us about patience in the face of suffering. Today we'll talk about the wisdom of patience, the need for patience, and our innate value of patience. Our reading begins with uh, these words. Be patient then, brothers, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop and how patient he is for the autumn and spring rains. You too be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. We all know what it's like to have to wait for something. Even in a culture like ours where you can get so many things instantly, inevitably, you're going to have to wait for something. The question is, how will you act while you are waiting? The letter of James was written to Christians who were suffering greatly for their faith. Naturally, they were eager for that suffering to stop. Yeah? I mean, who wouldn't be? But in their impatience, it led them to a lot of problems. As Christians, God has promised us some amazing things. But much of them... We don't have right now. We have to wait for them. At times, that waiting is brutal, and especially so for the these original recipients of this letter, James, uh, the letter of James. For some of these Christians, they were tempted to abandon their faith altogether because of their impatience. They felt, what was the point of waiting for this? If right now is so hard, why should I wait for good in the future? James gives us the picture of a farmer. You got to have patience to be a farmer, yeah. No matter how hard you work, no matter what pro uh, how productive you are as a person, once those seeds are planted, they're going to take the time they need to grow. Again, you can maybe speed things up a little, but but only so much. You have to wait. If you abandon your fields because they take too long, then you are totally out of all that work that you did. You did all that work to plant it, and it's all for nothing. So you have to be patient in order to get the rewards of that work. As we said before, all of us have to wait at some point or another. And you can either freak out about it and cause problems while you're waiting, or you can learn to be patient and control yourself until the waiting is done. Patience is the wise way. As Christians, we know that Jesus is coming again. And when he comes, he will raise all the dead to life again. He will judge us not guilty, and he will usher us into eternal life, where we will finally enjoy this world the way that God intended it to be. God will set all things right on that day, and we rightfully say we can't wait for that. But especially here, especially now, the right thing for us to do is to wait patiently. Jesus will come again. We know he is coming, but until he must, or until then, we must endure in our faith. We must continue in what God has taught us instead of demanding that he do things according to our schedules. This brings us to our second point, the need for our patience. And this is what James speaks about next in the next few words here. He says, don't grumble against each other, brothers, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. You see, this is the big danger of impatience. The Christians living back then, they were not patiently waiting for Jesus to come again. They were not enduring the suffering that has coming their way because of their faith. And all this led them to hurt each other. They spoke harshly to one another. They allowed their impatience to harm the people that were around them. And I think all of us get this, yeah? We've all had that day where things just haven't been going our way and we're brooding over things or whatever and we just end up snapping at the people around us. Maybe it was a stranger, maybe a coworker, maybe it was your fellow people at church, maybe it was your own family. Whatever it is, we 
can end up even hurting those people that we love. Sometimes we allow ourselves to, to keep doing this day after day because we have failed to have patience. None of us can stand impatience in somebody else, right? We can't stand impatient people around us. But we need to realize that we have that same effect on other people when we ourselves fail to endure delays in our lives. Not only is impatience bad for the world around us, but James points out that it is damaging you as well. Impatience will be judged like any other sin, James says. If we refuse to acknowledge the evil that we accomplish against other people, all because we want things right here and right now, like a little child does, then God will show us one day just how wicked that is. So James has shown us that, that the wisdom of and the need for patience, and now he shows us that we all naturally want patience anyway. This is not really something that we're fighting against here. We, we recognize the value even if we don't necessarily live it out ourselves. We have a natural admiration for patient people. James writes, Brothers, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we consider blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. James points us to Job. Recall his life. Job was a godly man. He did the right things. He said the right things. He prioritized the right things. And he did pretty well for himself too. He was wealthy. He had a big, beautiful family. He had it all. And then, in one day, Job lost it all. A series of catastrophes destroyed all of his wealth and killed all of his children. In his grief, nevertheless, Job spoke those incredible words. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. Wow, that's some incredible stuff, right? We admire his attitude, right? I know I want to be more like that. And then the story doesn't stop there. Job actually lost his health, too. He became covered in, in painful sores. Even to the point that his wife, seeing him in this condition, seeing him in all this grief, she told him, just curse God and die already. Perhaps she thought, just get this all over with. What is, what is he holding on to? There was nothing to live for in her mind, but Job's response to her was, shall we accept good from God and not trouble? Another amazing display of patience. Job's life continued on, despite that incredible suffering, despite that incredible loss. And in the end, after he had gone through this horrible time in his life, God restored him. God brought mercy to him again, brought blessing back into his life. Even though he had lost so much, even though he had suffered so much, he did so patiently. Now, if you read about Job, you certainly had his times, but, but overall you do see this patience in Job throughout his suffering. James also points us to, to the other prophets that we read about in the scripture. They suffered all kinds of things. Jeremiah was dropped into his cistern and left, to, left for dead. Daniel was thrown to the lions. Uh, the, the three men were tossed into a fiery furnace. We could go on. But the thing is, we admire all those godly people specifically because they faced persecution with patience. We look at those people and think, man, I don't know if I could ever do that. We already want to live this way. And so God calls us to actually do it. And to put that very patience in us, God shows us the most patient one of all, Jesus Christ, our Savior. He was perfectly patient. Even after a, a long day of hard work, he never snapped at those who came to him for help. Instead, he was still willing to drop his own plans in order to do what was best for those around him. Even when he was unjustly arrested, tortured, and killed, he remained perfectly patient. Also, that his patience could be credited to your account. When people made fun of him and spat on him, he didn't retaliate. When they nailed him to the cross, he patiently prayed, Father, 
forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Jesus' patience earned our forgiveness, and it has granted us perfect patience in God's sight. And now, as we wait for Jesus, our risen Savior, to return and bring us life eternal, we have everything we need to be patient now. We can endure the current hardships. We can persevere even when things are delayed, things that we're hoping for, things that we're looking for. Even if they last longer than we had wanted, we can wait it out because we know where this all ends. It ends with us and Jesus together forever. My fellow believers, today we saw that patience is the wise way to wait. We saw that those around us and we ourselves need patience in our lives. We saw that this desire is, is innately in us, it's naturally in us, and that God supernaturally puts this Christian patience in us through Jesus. May God grant each of us patience in the face of suffering. Amen. And I say, I say, I say, can't be that easy. And he said, he said, and no, it wasn't easy. But be still and know.